Greetings. Hello. Welcome back. Awesome. Mitch, good to see you. Another good day here. We're finally getting some uh, nice weather after all these storms. Uh, today, we're just going to look at the Uchi Uke block, inside block. Interesting block. Really interesting. And I think the most interesting thing is that you never, if ever, maybe rarely see it in uh, tournaments. It's just not, it doesn't lend itself to that style of fighting because, and I think the reason is there's no grabbing. The thing about uh, Uchi Uke is that it really works well if it combines with Tensho grabs and blocks and so on. So we want to look at that today. Uh, Rochelle, Marco, it was good to see you. I was encouraged us to do the Uchika today because the analysis that you did years ago. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. It's interesting to think that even though the first point is many people, even within Kyokushin and without, see the tournament fighting as the be all and end all of Kyokushin. Okay, that's where the the fighters get their fame and their success. And you're world champion. Yeah, the indeed. Tour, Japan champion. Yeah, so that sporting aspect is really, really important. But you never see the UTU care in it. So I found that interesting because one day when I had too much time on my hands, I counted all the techniques in all the kata. And in Kyokushin, we have a lot of kata, too many. But I did all the techniques in all the kata. And I counted them. The most common technique in all the Kyokushin kata is Chudanski, middle punch. The second most common technique is Uchiuke. And I found that really, really interesting. Because remember that the kata that we have come from two streams, the Shotokan stream and uh, the Goju stream of Miyagi Chojin. These guys really knew what they were doing. And the other thing we have to remember, we can never, it's like the elephant in the room that everyone in karate tries to ignore, is that all these masters had fourth, fifth, sixth degree black belts in judo. So they're not going to experience the practicality of judo and ignore it when they're creating karate. They wanted karate to be as strong as possible. So that means that a lot of the techniques that they had of course, they became when Anko Itosu uh, lobbied to have karate accepted as a form of physical culture, you know, physical education in high schools in Japan. Of course, they're not going to be doing things like come across here, take the throat out, hit them with an elbow, and break their jaw. So a lot of the techniques were softened. But Uchiuke remained in the kata, and I think it really lends itself to karate when you have the grabbing and grappling involved. Okay, so today we're just going to look at a few of these techniques so that you can see. Okay, so Uchi Uke. Here's Uchi Uke. Okay, we come across, we make sure the elbows touch. A lot of people, when they practice Uchi Uke, they do this sort of thing. The volume becomes more important than the quality. Bad, bad thing to do. So you go, ah, 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 ah. And, if, and it looks good in a camera, but look, you analyze it, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. There's no connection with the arms or anything. So the correct way to do it is I have the wrist, the shoulder height, not the hand, because if my hand is shoulder height and I open my hands, my hands are too low. But if my wrist is shoulder height and I open my hands, the hands are the good height. So the wrist is shoulder height. I rotate my body, point this hand, and finish you too care. There. The key is this connection of the elbow. See the elbows touch. There. 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 See? There like that. Okay. This is really important. It it lends itself to you care. Get on, buddy. Put it down here. It lends itself to Uchiuke. Get on, buddy. Look, Uchiuke. Get on, buddy. Is Uchiuke. 
Uchiuke and Gedambara to combine. Okay, Uchiuke, Gedambara. And that's probably one of the more, most uh, commonly practical ways in a real situation when you're dealing with things, when you want to continue on to enter into the grappling range. Okay, so we'll just look at a few of those applications here. First of all, I don't know how well it's going to go. How about I put it here? First of all, we want to look at the situation. Remember in Kata, uh, the Chozu Miyagi said that there is one opponent and he's right in front of you. So even when you turn angles, it's not like I'm turning to face someone else. What I'm doing is the punch comes and I'm moving off to the side. Okay? So even that's the first move straight out of Taikyoku 3. Back there like that. Uchiuke, interesting. Okay? I don't know what he's going to do. So I, I bring my hands up as he throws. I just happen to be on the inside. Sometimes as he throws it, I happen to be on the outside. But they both have their application. This is the thing we need to remember. So I'm here like this. I move off to the side. There's the first move out of um, Taikyo Xono San and also out of Taik, uh, Taik, uh, Pinan 3 and Pinan 5. Pinan 3 goes like this and then 1, 2. Pinan 5 goes and then back to here. Okay, so they all had their application. The most important thing to remember about Uchiuke is that isolated in itself, it doesn't really do a whole lot. We'll just move this way a little bit. Okay, so when the punch comes, this is why in itself you don't see it in tournaments because the reality is if I do Uchiuke, he's just going to keep, and those punches are coming, and a tournament is a different thing. But a street fight, he's reaching out to grab, He's reaching for my hair. Oh, yeah, he's, he's grabbing this sort of thing. He's doing all this. And that's where the Uchiuke becomes so powerful. If he grabs, say, grabs my hair like that, I can come up here like that. There's my Uchiuke. Here, boom, there. Or he comes up there. There's my Uchiuke. He grabs my hair again. Look, Uchiuke, bang. Now I want to make sure then I come to the outside because he's going to grab my hair and thumb me with that hand. Okay, so as I do it, I move off behind and I make sure I don't want trouble. So then bang, boom, boom, bang, and I come in here like this and I make sure I go to his dark side. Gene LaBelle calls it the dark side of the moon. Let's try to get behind him. Okay? He goes to grab me. Boom, there like this. I come up here, break it, and once again I go to that um, arm grab. If he goes to push or drag, but I beat him to it, look, it's the perfect use of Uchiuke. If he gets the grab on, now that's a different thing. I really, that's, you get a judo guy, grab your gi, I would bet London to a brick that you'd have a heck of a time breaking it. Unless you go, bang, arm, heel, right across the jaw or in the carotid sinus or poke in the eye. Then things soften up very quickly. I remember, uh, I won't give you the stories, but anyway. Okay, so I break that, come into arm drag. But if he doesn't get the grab, well, look, there's you, you care. I'm here, bang, just there, look, one, two. He goes to push me, oh, he pushes me. Or arm drag, there like that. One, two, look at the Uchiuke application. There, we teach this, even in the BJJ school I teach, I, I teach, I'd say, this is in karate, we call this Uchiuke. It's an inside block, punch comes there. Remember, you do the technique correctly, the elbow stays in. If I do it wrongly, the elbow lifts up. If he gets his arm on my shoulder and I lift, I lift the elbow up, I'm going nowhere. But if I keep the elbow in, there, it's like this, that technique. He, he, let's just, I, I hate to say to Mitch, do this or do that, but just for the sake of the illustration, if the, if the left hand comes in, I come up here, look, same technique. Uchiuke, but now I'm on the outside. So I can come in here, I can grab, I can control and start to grapple, or I can simply come to here and continue on with an elbow break. You can do that hand if you want. For there, there's my Uchiuke, look, there. See that? I do. I don't know what he's going to do, so that's why the hands stick together, come up. But if I'm too late to get the hands up, I make sure my elbows come together so I cover the entire center line. That's where you're most vulnerable. I guarantee if he hit me right on the jaw or in the throat, I'm in trouble. But if he hit me on the chest or on the shoulder, there's a lot less trouble. So it's a center line you need to protect. So I come there. Look, there's my Uchiuke right there. 
and ten shell, and there. So if you're watching uh, in a bit closer, slow motion, come up here. Look, the hands come up. That's where I pick up the technique. The hands come. I pick up the technique there. Ten shell. Look, as I catch his wrist, this arm hardly moves. All I do is I create a barrier. And I bisect the line between his fist and his shoulder. So if I'm moving his hand over, the whole elbow moves over. But if I put a block there, now the elbow hurts or dislocates or it maybe just tweaks. But whatever it does, it doesn't work in his favor. Look, one, two, there like that. Okay, and then I can knock that down again. I can hit with the elbow or knock it down, palm heel there like that. We start, remember... So also is so adamant. I'm reading, I've got a new project at the moment. I'm, well, I'll just keep it to myself till I'm finished, but I'm working on a new project. So also is so adamant that all the karate fundamentals come from China. So he talks about Shingi Tai. And if you've, uh, if you've been paying attention, you would have grabbed Sensei Mike Clark's book called Shingi Tai. It's the best book written on the subject in the world. And Solso talks about Shin Gi Tai, Shin the mind, Gi technique, Tai the body. He says, Shin the mind. All the techniques originate, the, the, the breathing techniques and the, the techniques of meditation so on originate in India. And it's interesting. We're just reading the very first edition of Solso's What is Karate? And the first sentence of the first introduction by Eisaku Sato, who was the, uh, the mayor of Tokyo, wrote the foreword of the book. He says that the origins of karate are India. India yeah. Okay, Shin, the mind, India. Gi, waza, technique, so also says, originate in China. And Tai, karada, or the physical conditioning that karate does, is or originates originally in uh, Okinawa and China uh, and Japan. So Japan, China, India. So the techniques that so also I was so adamant about, look, all these circular techniques, Circular techniques coming here like this, back fist, back fist here, or even cock hand, these sort of things. It's also was so adamant about circle and point. And this is why Kyogushin is not a hard style. It's a soft style done, trained hard. Okay? The difference between a hard style and a soft style is not how hard they train, it's their technique. A linear style can be designated as a hard style. A circular style style can be designated as a soft style. In that respect, okay. Technique comes, boom, I come up. There's my Uchiuke block, or even from here, from the as it. And I was watching a really nice video recently of some Goju masters, and everything they do, everything they did in this video, at least, as the punch comes, started with Uchiuke. It was all about Uchiuke. If they come on the inside, look, bang, bang. You go to the outside, bang, boom. Okay, so. Uh, in what is karate, so also divides self-defense techniques into two types. One is called gyaku waza, or in other words, grappling. The other one is called kime waza, or striking. And he has a whole body in that book where all the techniques he does finish with throws and takes down, takedowns. And then you go to the kime waza, all the techniques finish with strikes. Very interesting stuff. Okay, so we're here. Technique comes. There's my uchiuke. It can't be done out of isolation, and this way you don't see it in tournaments because you can't grab. But in a tournament, as you're doing tournament fighting, you start to grab, and they go, bruh, 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 bruh. you get disqualified for grabbing. That's why you don't see it because the Uchiuke lends itself to a follow up grab. Even even the Uchiuke movement, look, there's your Tensho movement. Boom, look at the Uchiuke. Uchiuke. Tensho. Tensho. The Tensho movement itself is an Uchiuke movement. So the, te the technique comes, we go here, bang, knock down, there. Technique comes the other hand, just for the sake, now I'm on the inside, okay? Now I can step straight in, or there, back fist there, cock hand there, punch there, like that, all off Uchiuke, okay? So this is a technique you don't see in tournaments, but it is so versatile in so many different ways, and it allows you to grab. On the inside, allows you to arm drag. On the outside, allows you to go the other hand. Look, on the outside, allows you to come in for the two on one to control here. Come up, control. On the inside here, arm drag. On the outside there, 
boom, elbow break, knock down, continue on there on the inside here, boom, there, back fist, cock in straight away. All off the all, inside, outside, yes, uchi uke. all off the uchi uke. And it's such a beautiful technique, but it's so neglected because you don't see it in tournaments. So, a question for you, Shian. Yep. That exercise that you did, the analysis of counting all the uchi that turned out to be the second most popular technique in all the kata. Did you know that going in, or no. did that did that exercise influence your karate? Yes, Abs that's a really good question. I had no idea what it'd be. Uh, it started to become obvious halfway through the kata. There was a very strong bias towards middle punches and uchiuke. But what did influence me was I have such deep respect for the old masters, and I I just really get annoyed when you have the young generation. You know the the latest generation of mixed martial artists and everything who disrespect the sort mixed martial arts. It means they take all the techniques from all the different martial arts. So mixed martial arts as we know it wouldn't be in existence if it wasn't for all these traditional styles. But they disrespect it because they see a picture of some guy doing this and they well that's not going to work. Okay, yeah, but you don't know that. You know the the hardest toughest world roaming uh, mixed martial arts, no holds barred fighters were, you know, guys like Motobu Choki and all the old karate masters. Okay. So when I saw that, it became very influential to me. I thought these guys really know what they're doing. Why is it that Uchiuke was so prevalent? And then I think it's a bit of both actually when I think about it because I'd been – doing some wrestling and I started to notice a lot of karate applications, get um to, to break blocks and uchiuke to wipe hands off shoulders and so on. So I started to think, yeah, I'm starting to see a lot of applications for uchiuke, even when you're grappling and they grab your gi and you want to break that grip and so on. When you think about it, like we can't really do it here, but we always teach if someone grabs, it's a bit hard because yeah. it's not the same, but if when someone grabs your gi, we always, I always teach them to grab the gi back and spiral down break like it. that to break the grip. Well, there's an application for get unbarai there, you know. So the old masters who had such depth of experience, not just just with stand up fighting, but also with grappling as well, they really were onto something very uh, influential. It did influence me. It did. It started to make me look at the bunkai, the application. The Oyo, you know, as Sensei Mike Clark pointed out last week, um, there's a difference between Bunkai and Oyo, even though they kind of they You're used interchangeably. They blend, yeah. yeah. But Bunkai, it, literally, Bunkai is a verb, really, Bunkai sort of means to compartmentalize or to break down. So Bunkai is the breaking down of the technique. But when you apply it, it becomes Oyo. Okay. So uh, when you when I started to play more with uh, bunkai applications and so on, then I started to see the application of uchiuke more commonly. Us, us Rochelle, Marco, us, Matus, us, uh, Sensei Mike, good to see you. Mel, us, hi, Marguerite Toth. Is that Margaret Toth from high school? Ronan, quite effective when paired with a body punch with the opposite hand at the same time. Yes. That's a really good point because as, as you get up in the ranks, for example, fourth down, fifth down, the testing for fifth and sixth down and so on requires that you work on things like uh, Kosaho and Ryusui, the, the advanced techniques. And Kosaho basically is a simultaneous thing. When you grapple, the simultaneous things become more obvious and more important because you don't have time to do it one than the other. Even even as when you're grappling, even as I'm doing this, I'm doing that sort of thing. You know, you can't just go sort this out, then go here because it's too late. But Ronan's talking about um, there's a lot of techniques in kata, for example, in uh, Geksai Sho, where you come here like this. There's also, uh, I think it's Kanku, where you go there. And the same thing can happen when a punch comes. Let's do this one for the sake of illustration. I, I punch and hit at the same time. So I'm going across. Man, 
I thought I hit. I hit the microphone. That's what I, I thought I hit the microphone. That's how hard Mitch's body is. My hands <laughs> sore now. Okay. So yeah, you get that sort of thing. Yeah, here. Boom. And as you block, you strike at the same time. There. Or as this punch, punch, boom. There. It's a simultaneous. There, like this. So you see it in kata a lot. This, this sort of thing. Uh, I think it's in a lot of um, goju or maybe Shotokan kata, or so that sort of thing. When the technique comes there, look, you hit at the same time as the strike. Or so there, I, I have trouble with that simply because I'm so used to looking for the double grab, or so, okay, and I don't strike as much as I, I grab. But it makes a lot of sense to punch come there like that. I just don't have. Shout, is that yeah. the same concept as when we do the kicking drills that you showed it to us over the years? Like you throw a leg kick at me, just for example. Yeah, I do simultaneous. Simultaneous. Of course, I'll have a simultaneous technique. Of course, I'm slightly different in that you have, so throw that, you have the block and the punch at the same time. Oops. Then this one comes, punch there. You have that sort of movement where I'm blocking and hitting at the same time. That's more okay. to the point with of the course, I'll hold. But yeah, I mean, the simultaneous, yes. I guess is the best English word to use Oops. for it. Oops. Ronan, yeah, it is. Good point, Ronan. Good on you. So anyway, that's just a quick view of Uchi Uke. You really need to practice it. You keep the elbow in. Remember that Uchi Uke doesn't come outside like this. Okay? That's more, I use that sort of thing. It's more an upper block. When you're coming here, the difference between Uchi Uke and Jordan Uke is not the elevation, it's the elbow position. Look, there, you're covering the center line there. This one, I'm covering the center line there. One brings the elbow, keeps the elbow in, it takes the hand out because you're using that application there. Jordan Uke takes the arm up. So it's interesting that Jordan Uke leads the body behind the block. Uchi Uke, the body, leads the block. Okay, a little bit yeah, well, esoteric, but um, that's main difference so which you can the elbow stays in and you have to practice that and get used to it so it's quite natural and when you do sunshine that's why when you, you watch masters of sunshine it's all about this elbow staying the elbow staying inside there like that not this sort of thing and you watch people who have learned it from people who've learned it from people who've learned it from people who've learned it who have no idea and at some stage it gets lost in translation that elbow position, Shian, as I've started to grapple more, it's become very obvious that if you haven't grappled, you can get away sometimes with a looser elbow yes. because you don't realise the, the, the opening, the waki, yes. just how absolutely yes. you don't want to do that. Yes, true. And about 94, 95, um, around that time when Professor Carlos Gracie Jr. came to Australia with Maisho Feitosa and Professor Gordo, um, Roberto Correa, congratulations, just got his coral belt. So I think that's wow. the equivalent of about a seventh down or so. But they all came out with Peter Tabin. Peter Tabin was the one that brought them to Australia. And uh, Peter Tabin was probably one of Australia's very first BJJ black belts, if not the first. And he actually said something to me which, um, which changed my approach to grappling. He said, if you arrow dike your elbows to your body, you'll get rid of 90% of the problems you'll ever face. And Uchiuke is all about that arrow died in the elbow to the body. Very effective pair of the body punch. Yeah, go, yeah good. Us, Marguerite Todd. Where are you from, Marguerite? That looks like a Hungarian name. Us, another one kind of hot. The added bonus of this technique is that because of the mechanics of the body, when the opponent throws a punch, the extended punch affects muscles in the stomach. Yeah, well, that's a good point too. So that's why the simultaneous. Us, Gaza, do you think... The touching, joining of the elbows and is all about promoting torso angle and torque in the technique. Um, I haven't really thought of it like that. It will affect the torso angle. It's a good point, Gaza. But more to the point is it just covers the center line. So I'm going to get Mitch to go very slowly because I'm gotten older. But if I was to say to Mitch, punch me in the head, punch me in the body, punch me in the groin, okay? If I wanted to block them and I don't bring my elbows together, he punches me in the head and I miss it. He punches me in the body and I miss it, punches me in the groin and I miss it. But if I bring my elbows together, 
I pick it up because the, old, the, the technique then covers the center line. So now I could almost do it, not that I'm suggesting you do, just for the sake of illustration, but I close my eyes and I go punch, and I close my eyes. I don't know where he's punching, but because I bring my elbows together, I know that the center line is covered. So for me, Gaz, it's more about the center line. But that's a good point about the, the, um, the body angle because I come here for Gedambare now. I go from there and turn my body. For Uchiuke, turn my body. For Jodanuke, turn my body. So they all come off. This Uchiuke comes off. Gedambare comes off. Look, there's your Gedambare there. Is your Jordan Uke there? They all come off with the elbows. Uh, so really, the blocks in one effect. If you if you're picking everything up off the center line, if the punch comes, let's say he throws an upper punch, boom, then I can take it away with an upper block. Remember, Uchi Uke Jordan Uke Uke doesn't mean to block; it means to receive. So you could say that when I receive that and I take it away with an upper block, because that's the angle. If he throws a middle block, middle punch, I take it away with a middle block. Okay, if he throws a, a lower punch, I still block it with the same thing, but now I'm going to take it away with the, the downward parry. Okay, so that's a good, good point too, Gaz. It actually affects the angle that you use. Using the synchronized technique in two different tendon reflexes simultaneously, that's a good point too. Really good point, yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, Marco. You, you said, um, and also I think... When you talk about soul size, three points of 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 technique, you know, was not kanku, you know, chose chikara no kyojaku, was no kanku, the timing technique, you know, chose breath control, and chikara no kyojaku, the points of power stress. That's really interesting. I'm going to do a whole session on the points of power stress. We're doing a video of that soon because I just had some really fascinating insights about that. But the karate do kyohan by Funakoshi Gichin, he has sim three similar points, which is soul where soul size said. He got the original seed thought, but instead of breath control, he talks about the expansion and contraction of the body. So that's actually in line with what you're saying there too, Gaz. Here you have this contraction of the body. Everything comes together, and then you have the expansion of the body like that. So expand, contract and expand, and that's uh, very, very interesting. Uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate your presence. We love it when you come. Uh, remember to, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the little button and the bell and uh, pass the word around. That's the best thing you can do because uh, we know that there are a lot of Kyogushin people out there who might benefit from what we do. Absolutely. Um, so get the word out and help us to grow the channel. I think we're getting close to 3,000 subscribers, so that's very nice. Uh, and we get all 11 or 12 of them every week, and we're killing it. Mr. Beast is in big trouble. Looking over his shoulder. Yeah, I know. He's getting worried. Okay, you doing? Us. Thanks, guys. Appreciate everything. Appreciate you coming along. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Us, Mitch. Us. Thank you. Us. Thank you.